Alrighty, friends, let's talk practical takeaways. Um, uh, contextualization is talking about how do we translate the gospel from one culture to uh, another. You, you mentioned, Caleb, about we can kind of overdo this, we can kind of underdo this. Um, overdoing it, we just kind of syncretize it to say, hey, basically, you be you, just add Jesus, sprinkle a little Jesus, and then maybe we get to a place where we're just like, it's completely foreign, doesn't make sense, it's like speaking another language to someone. How, how do you think we can, what are some principles to like find that sweet spot or like really contextualizing what, what you're doing like in the gospel? I think um, it's a great question. I think the more we under, the better we understand the culture that we're working in yeah. uh, or cultures that we're yeah. working in, um, the better we can recognize, okay, what would it be like uh, if, if, I, if I were to share the gospel or, or live it out or disciple someone um, in a way that's familiar enough that they can get it, but foreign yeah. enough that it's clearly something different than the, what they already know. Yeah. So it takes a level of intentionality. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I also think that, um, again, going back to the Holy Spirit, God doesn't want us to create syncretism or, or fall into obscurity. He wants us to find that sweet mm-hmm. spot. And so there's a lot of grace there. And I think the, the Holy Spirit guides us to avoid some of those pitfalls. Mm. But, you know, I was thinking college ministry, I think, is one of those where you have adults coming in and trying to imagine what's appropriate for students, <laughs> right? Like yeah. when I was a kid, that's, uh, so I was that's gonna, the worst. I know, never right? So when, uh, so, so I would ask you, yeah. what, how can, how can someone who's a year or two or many more yeah. removed from the college experience, how do they kind of imagine what it should look like to, to mm-hmm. minister to college students? Um, to me, you can't yeah. operate on your experience. It's yeah. only, it's only worth so much. Yeah, no, you're totally right. And I, and I think that's where, and I've seen this in ministries that, you know, I have people that say, hey, we've got like 25 students that are coming and, you know, we're not, we're not growing. It's kind of stuck, you know, we're just kind of stuck in this place and else, and you kind of begin to dig around and you realize that the whole ministry is based on the imagination of, or the leadership of just an adult that's yeah. literally doing everything. And I uh, mean, praise the Lord for adults that want to give their lives sure. to college students. But what you're doing is you're, you're building a ministry based on your understanding and not uh, the college students. Mm-hmm. So we talked about this a little bit ago. Is that that we want? Is a, if you're an adult in a college ministry, you want to guard like, hey, we are going to be gospel-driven people in a ministry, and we're we're going to guard that. But how this is fleshed out among you and your student body, that's where the students come in to really begin to see this is how this makes sense to this audience. Yeah. And and that, that differs some because I even think the church that I'm at, if a if a student has experienced church then inviting them to, to church on a Sunday morning is not going to be that foreign. That's right. They're going to get it. They'll, they'll kind of understand it. But if a student has not been to church and they're not church at all, really that lunch, which probably lunch is a good starter for everybody, um, a lunch and then inviting them into smaller communities is a really great way for them to been, to hear the gospel and experience that Christian kind of community. So I, I think the, the kind of the principle here is, is, is if if you're an adult, you're leading a ministry right now. Is to think about, okay, I need to guard what's the most important, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to be about. But as college students, how should that be fleshed out in ministry? Yeah. How does how do we get this to college students? And I think that's where you begin to, I think just asking that question. If you've got a student, like if you're a student across from me, and I say, hey, how can we get this into the hands of your friends? That is an incredible discipleship moment. Yeah and a challenge to them to really grow in their faith of like, okay, well, how would you want to hear? My, my wife asked me this question. She goes, I try to share the gospel with people the way I would want to hear the gospel. I'm like, that's genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, sure. That's really genius. And that's a great way. That's probably a great question to ask college students. Yeah, and to ask a student, how would yeah. you want to hear this? Yeah. And I think that it even works with non-believers. You yeah. can say to a non-believer, what is it about Jesus that, that, that you like or don't like? Yeah. And, and if they're saying, I don't like the idea that he uh, wants me to surrender, surrender my life to him, then it's like, well, you get the gospel and you're rejecting it. Yeah. But if they say, well, I don't like all the tradition and rules, oh, wait a second, let's mm. talk about that. Yeah. And so I feel like identifying those bridges and barriers, yeah. and that way we can uh, go around the barriers and mm. across the bridges, mm-hmm. um, it just feels like uh, through dialogue. Mm. And, and the other thing is, again, we don't have to use so much of our imagination. Yeah. Uh, instead, we can say, look, what I know is the word. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to disciple students, and they're going to kind of tell me what it might look like. Yeah. And I do think we do need to have some flexibility, yep. some patience. When students come back and said, oh, uh, what if we do uh, a worship service? 
and you're like, that's genius. Why didn't I think of it? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Let's try that. Let's, let's yeah. experience that. Yeah. But if they come back and say, hey, we need to do uh, you know, something totally different, um, maybe let's try it and let's mm. see. But again, always holding them, everything up to the standard of the word. So if they say something that would contradict the word or lead us in sin or the appearance of sin, no, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think it's more like we're the stabilizer. We're the yeah. ones pointing them back to the word yeah. in, in collegiate ministry and, mm. and not trying to dream up creative ways to engage. Let's let yeah. the students lead, take the lead in that. Absolutely. I, t I totally agree. And I think that's really a way to empower your students yeah. to begin to mobilize them uh, to share uh, to share the gospel. So contextualization is we want to help take this ancient message that's 2,000 years old and put it in the hands of college students to share it in a way that's going to land well uh, with their friends.